The Red Raiders stay in fuego on the recruiting trail as they land a top 10 offensive lineman in the transfer portal. Who is he and what can Red Raider Nation expect from him in 2024? We'll discuss that and take a way too early look at the projected offensive line for the Red Raiders next season. Oh, and by the way, we'll look at the current transfer portal rankings for Texas Tech and where they rank nationally in the current cycle. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you are liking these transfer portal updates. And really, if you like what Texas Tech is doing in the transfer portal right now, the Red Raiders stack up well against, well, you're going to see later on, about everybody in the country in terms of where they rank. They're doing a hell of a job, Joey McGuire and crew is, in the transfer portal in terms of targeting what they need. We'll discuss that, obviously, here on the channel in great links as the news comes in. So you're going to want to stay in the know right here by simply hitting that subscribe button and liking the video to join the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's jump right into it as the Red Raiders landed a top 10 offensive lineman in this current portal cycle in Memphis offensive lineman transfer, Davon Carter. He is 6'3", 290, and has one year of eligibility left. He will be the starting right guard for the Red Raiders in 2024 if everything goes right. As I mentioned, he's a top 10 offensive lineman in this current transfer portal cycle. That is according to PFF. Now, he's one of the best guards in the country if you look at those metrics from PFF. And if you see right here, he's got a 79.4 rating in terms of all across this offensive lineman, whether that's pass blocking, run blocking, and that ranked good enough for 11th nationally. That doesn't matter if it's group of five, power five. He was the 11th ranked guard overall in the country. Okay. When it came to passing, he had an 87.2 grade on 522 passing snaps. That'll play. Oh, by the way, the Red Raiders beat two fellow Big 12 members on the recruiting trail to land Carter, and that was the Kansas Jayhawks and Coach Prime in the Colorado Buffalo. So, again, I've mentioned this is a day one starter. Texas Tech in back-to-back days with the addition of Vinny Scurry and now Davon Carter have landed their two starting guards in the transfer portal in a matter of basically 24 hours. That's a hell of a get for the Red Raiders, and now – We'll talk about it here in just a second in terms of way too early projections for the Texas Tech offensive line. That really helps you with your interior from an experience perspective and a provenness perspective. That's something that Texas Tech was going to struggle with next year because you're going to see we have some guys in terms of Texas Tech that are younger, that they don't have as much experience. Now you get them a little bit more seasoning in terms of the experience factor. And let's just jump right into it. Here's my way too early projections, and I get it. Left tackle, I'm not making a projection because I think there's really three or four guys, and they may even add somebody in the portal that could play left tackle for Texas Tech. But, yes, you are reading that correctly. Caleb Rogers, I think, shifts inside the center. Joy McGuire and crew have talked about Caleb Rogers going from a tackle spot inward. Well, the only other spot that makes sense – now that you've landed Scurry and you've landed Carter is center. And the reason being is this. They've talked to NFL teams about Rodgers, and they say they want to see more film on him on the inside, and it'll give him a better chance to make an NFL roster and potentially get drafted. So I would not be shocked at all if Caleb Rodgers is the starting center for the Red Raiders going into 2024. And it kind of makes sense from the standpoint of who are the centers that have played for Texas Tech in 2023. You got Dennis Wilburn out of eligibility. Rusty Stats, he made that shift from center to right guard, out of eligibility. So you get an experienced guy under center in terms of Baron Morton being there, and you get an experienced center in Caleb Rogers. That familiarity factor cannot go understated. I think Ty Buchanan will be the starting right tackle for Texas Tech going in to 2024 if all goes right. The big question is left tackle, and you see some of the depth there below that I've listed on the screen. And you've got the guys, you know, Jackson, Fatigue, Wilson, Carr, Davis. Wilson's more of an interior guy. I think Fatigue is as well. But you've got a guy like Caden Carr. I'm very interested in in terms of maybe his potential to start at left tackle for Texas Tech in 2024. But don't forget, they could also land somebody in the portal as well in terms of some of the left tackles and tackles in general 
that they're going after. Uh, they lost one to Virginia Tech, but no big deal. You landed a guy in Davon Carter at the right guard spot that's really going to solidify things for Texas Tech on the interior with a ton of experience. Think about it. You could le legitimately, if my prediction is right in terms of left guard, center, and right guard, be starting three guys that are in their fifth year of college football. That's a hell of an offensive line right there. And th two guys in Scurry and Carter from the portal that have ranked very highly at the group of five level for certain metrics. And that's what Texas Tech wants to do. They identify guys in the portal that have a certain skill set that they can just plug and play and allow those guys to develop behind them. And then that way in 2025, you're going to see guys like Fatigue in there. You're going to see guys like Carr. You're going to see guys like Wilson and potentially four-star commits like Holton Hendricks from Lubbock. And then you could also see a guy like Ellis Davis as well. So you're giving those guys time to mature a little bit, get in the weight room, and still have a solid offensive line, at least presumably, but also have some potential depth with those young guys where they could see snaps if, unfortunately, injuries happen. But I really like what Texas Tech has done so far from the offensive line standpoint, specifically the interior. And then you got a guy like Taj Brooks coming out, and he, quote, tweeted, Devin Carter, um, Davon Carter, excuse me, in terms of his tweet, in terms of his announcement to Texas Tech saying, let's run it. You know what he wants to do. Uh, that's for sure. But again, overall, the interior of the offensive line has a chance to be vastly improved with the experience factor. The left tackle spot, as I mentioned, according to Joey McGuire, will kind of just be up for grabs during spring and maybe even going into fall. We'll see where that lands. But I'm not too worried about that right now because, again, they could add somebody in the portal, but there's also multiple guys on this roster that I think you could plug and play over at left tackle as well if they earn the spot during spring and fall camp. All right, let's look at the current transfer portal rankings. This is as of Thursday, December 14th at the time of this recording. This is according to 24-7 Sports. You see it at the bottom of your screen right there. You got the Buffaloes and the Irish at the 1-2 spot. Got the Wildcats of Kentucky at three. Got the Gamecocks of South Carolina at four. NC State Wolfpack at five. And then your Texas Tech Red Raiders currently come in at number six in terms of the transfer portal class that Joe McGuire and crew have currently constructed. Listen, this will fluctuate, right? And Texas Tech may even go up if they get a guy like Josh Kelly, who is rumored to be potentially heading to the 806 by multiple guys at 24-7 that have put in a crystal ball prediction for that. And if that does happen, you know we'll have a video here on the channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video to stay in the know. But overall, I think Joey McGuire and crew have done a phenomenal job at addressing certain needs on this Texas Tech roster that had to be addressed. Okay, you go and you look at some of the guys that they've gotten on offense. We talked about the offensive line at great nauseum in this video, and rightfully so. I think that that was the biggest unit on this team that needed an overhaul with wide receiver being second. You think about some of the guys coming in for Texas Tech for the wide receiver spot, and I include the redshirt freshman guys in there like T.J. West, D.J. Kress, uh, Kelby Valson, as well as obviously a five-star wide receiver in Micah Hudson. But then you get Caleb Payday Douglas. If you want to hear more about him, be sure to go watch the previous video here on the channel. I give you a breakdown of the newest wide receiver commitment of the Red Raiders at the time of this recording, right? You look at what the Red Raiders have done. They've pinpointed a couple of positions in terms of the secondary, wide receiver, offensive line, and they have attacked, attacked, attacked on the transfer portal market. And they've done a phenomenal job at getting guys that can come in and maybe not be instant impact guys in the secondary from the standpoint of starters, but they're key positional depth pieces for the Red Raiders in 2024. Now on the offensive line, those are instant impact starters, right? And Scurry and Carter. Then you've got Douglas, a guy that I think will play significant snaps for the Red Raiders, who started the first five games for the Florida Gators last season in the SEC and was going to be one of their starting wide receivers. Unfortunately, suffered a lower leg injury and only got to play five games. He's going to be an impact guy in that wide receiver group for the Red Raiders next season. Overall, though, Texas Tech just has done a fantastic job at pinpointing those specific positions that they think need addressed. And it's proven right there in their ranking. Sixth overall, and they've got some guys in terms of preferred walk-ons, some other guys that'll help with depth. You look at Alex Lines at the tight end spot. You've obviously got Jalen Conyers as well. I mean, 
they have done a really, really good job at bettering this offense as a whole from an athletic standpoint and then getting a couple of guys on the defensive side of the football that can impact things, not only from the depth side and play meaningful snaps on defense, but also be key contributors on special teams in Jackson and then Cromwell as well. So, so far, so good for Texas Tech. And obviously, a top six portal ranking proves that. Uh, but as you know, these things will fluctuate and we'll have the latest breaking news right here on the Back to 12 podcast when it comes to everything transfer portal related for the Red Raiders. We'll talk about the bowl game as soon as that game is finished as well. So you know what you need to do. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, and while you're at it, you might as well hit that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech football, not only on the gridiron, but off of it as well all year long right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube and the Back to 12 podcast channel.